Welcome, everybody. If you're a first time viewer, hello, and extra special welcome to you. For those of you who might not be familiar with what this channel is all about, uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name's David, and I'm on a mission of sorts to bring high quality guitar education content to YouTube. To that end, I've been hard at work on a series of videos in which I take you through a number of jazz standards in order to become a better improviser. If you haven't checked that out, there's a link to the playlist down in the description below. This series is going to be just a little bit different, and more focused on hyper-specific aspects of guitar playing. Today, I'll be taking you through my approach to playing triads in all 12 keys across the entire register of the instrument. Before we get started, I want to point a couple of things out though. When I talk about close versus open position, I'm not referring to placement on the guitar, but rather the actual spacing of the notes and their relationship to one another. Also, when I use the term string group, I'm referring to a group of three strings. With that out of the way, let's get started with close position major triads. We'll start out by playing four chords on each string group. And that'll see us do root position, both inversions, and the octave of whichever one we started with on that particular group. Whenever we practice stuff like this, we should always work on covering the full range of the instrument. That means starting on the lowest inversion possible in the key we're in. For the key of C, that happens to be this second inversion triad here. From there, we'll move up to the root position, first inversion, and then the octave of the shape that we started at. Just like you practice a scale, make sure you do this in reverse as well. Then we'll repeat this process on the remaining three string groups. Let's check out what this all looks like close up while following along with the notation and chord diagrams down at the bottom of the screen. Before you move on to the next step in this process, make sure that you fully memorize the different shapes for each inversion. This is a fantastic way to deepen your knowledge of the notes on the fingerboard and commit them to memory. Now let's see how we can link these different groups together and play through our triads in a way that's more akin to how pianists would learn to do this. If you were paying close attention in the previous segment, you might notice that I played an extra chord on the last group. Well, that's to account for the next step in this process. Now, we're going to play two chords on each group of strings and move up a group each time we do so. Here's what that'd look like. Just like the last step in this process, it's super important to fully memorize each grip before moving on. Practically speaking, I'd say pay special attention to the notes that you have in the top and bottom positions of each of these shapes. That's going to allow you to make use of these in improvisation later on. For now, let's literally open these triads up and see what happens by spreading the notes apart somewhat. 
So now that we've gone through an entire key by using close position voicings, there's one more thing we can do before moving on to another key or another chord quality. In this section, we'll open these chords up by taking the same close position chords we learned earlier and just moving the middle note in each one up the octave. That sounds simple enough, but it's going to have some ramifications in terms of fingering as well as how many string groups that we can actually do this on. Let's start out the same way as in the previous segment, by doing four chords on each possible group of three strings. The first chord we started out with was this second version C. If I move the middle note C up the octave, it ends up there. Well, why here and not elsewhere? Well, it's simple, really. I want to play these things with either just a pick or a hybrid style with a pick and two fingers. Using this particular fingering makes either of those approaches equally easy. Since I've established that first chord, now I have my string group that consists of the sixth, the fourth, and the third strings. I'm going to move this through the inversions now in the same way that I did in the last section. Here, check this out. The next group starts out on the fifth string, but we're going to have to completely change the fingering from the close position chord. For reference, the close position chord looked like this, kind of like a campfire C major chord. We have to move the middle note, E, up the octave. Now, to make this playable with the pick and fingers, I'll do it like this. And I'm using the open G string for that middle note. Now I'll take this group through the inversions. Check out what that group looks like up close. This next one is actually going to be the last group that we can play like this. Starting out with the first close position chord on this set, I need to move the middle note, G, up the octave here. That gives me this shape. Just like before, I'll move the shape through the different inversions. Here, take a look. Finally, let's link these together and play them all the way through the entire range of the instrument. I'll do this by playing two voicings on each group and then moving up to the next one. Here's what that sounds like. Once you've gone through all of this and feel solid doing it in the key of C, you really should go back and practice the same method in all 12 keys and all chord qualities. That's major, minor, augmented, and diminished. Uh, don't just move chromatically either. Instead, try practicing your keys by moving around in fourths. Yeah, fourths. Why? Well, take a look at some of the tunes that you like, and I guarantee you'll see that a lot of cadences and chord movements, especially in jazz, tend to move by fourths. So it's good practice for us to become familiar moving around in this way on the fingerboard. I know that's probably going to sound like just a ton of work to some of you guys, but trust me, once you get the hang of the first couple of keys, you're going to absolutely breeze through the rest of them. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think of this video. Have you guys ever practiced your triads like this? Have you done it in all 12 keys and all chord qualities? What's your favorite chord quality to practice? I'm always curious about what other guitarists spend their time shedding, so feel free to chime in down in the comment section. If you guys found this helpful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. Also, don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss an upload. If you found this stuff really helpful, I've also got a Patreon page where I upload all the written content from every video, as well as some excellent bonuses for patrons only. As always, 
Thanks to all of you for your support. I'll see you guys in the next video.